Moving images from the early cinema stand as historical artifacts beyond the cinematic medium. Looking at examples such as this one, they have been used to study modes of dress, behavior, architecture, transportation, and urban living in the late 19th and early 20th century. More importantly, they can tell us about the people whose lives they record. For instance, in this subject, the policemen are carefully positioned as the central figures in the frame, guiding pedestrians and traffic through the scene. It's tempting in watching a scene like this to speculate about the degree to which the pedestrians stepping before the camera realized that they were walking into a part of recorded history that would be so closely studied and examined more than a century later. In Camera Lucida, Reflections on Photography, Roland Barthes said, quote, The photograph is an extended loaded evidence, as if it caricatured not the figure of what it represents, quite the converse, but its very existence, unquote. Looking at the scene of Union Square, taken in 1896, the information that arises out of the scene creates its own formulation of a narrative, which Gerard Jeanette describes as, quote, the succession of events, real or fictitious, that are the subjects of this discourse, unquote. While some would insist that this piece is strictly a non-narrative or documentary view, I would argue that through the detailed presentations of its subjects, it allows the spectator to draw narrative information through the careful staging of the scene. What is the extent to which the policemen in the foreground have been directed for their appearance before the Lumiere cinematograph? How is the movement or behavior of the pedestrians affected by their knowledge that they are being photographed? Depending on the degree to which such a scene is staged, it is necessary to consider the degree to which it tells us about the time and place being depicted, and the degree to which it tells us what its makers considered in choosing how to record it. In looking between the two, we can consider the Benjaminian idea of the aura of the photograph, which he defines as, quote, a strange weave of space and time, the unique appearance or semblance of distance, no matter how close the object may be, unquote. The small portable nature of digital photography allows such a scene to be captured today without the knowledge of its subjects, or at least with a much more discreet presence of the cinematographer and the camera apparatus. However, the objectivity of a scene like this still depends on the choice of subject matter, the duration of the shot, the selection of one shot among different takes, and so on. In other words, the degree to which this view is manipulated prevents it from being a truly objective one. One can also question how well such a recording captures the essence of the subjects at all. In the theory of film, Siegfried Krakauer contrasts the realism of the photographic image with that of the memory image, and argues that while the photograph can capture every detail with perfect accuracy, it is instead the more personal image of the memory that comes closer to capturing the essence of the subject. The spectator can still pull narrative information from the image. The elements that have made the early films of such historical importance dress, behavior, movement, and so on, can arrange themselves in such a way that we can form little narratives about the subjects passing in front of the camera. The information conveyed through the photographic image offers not only a recording of the subject at the time and place in which it was captured, but conveys, through those same elements, information that forms its own narrative discourse.